And welcome to In Depth tonight. The controversy surrounding e-cigarettes takes another turn today. The leading e-cig company in America says it will stop selling flavored products. Critics say those flavors are popular with younger vapors. Juul is also pulling the plug, it says, on a large part of its advertising. Now, we have reported rising lung illness rates. Uh, some health authorities say are being caused by some vaping products. 33 deaths have been reported nationwide, including here in Indiana and Illinois. Joining me now is Brad Bodart. He owns uh, two local vaping shops in Evansville called TKO Vapor. And uh, Brad, you're telling me you're taking issue with the very first thing I said in this uh, in-depth segment, the report itself. Tell me what bothers you about that. Well, it's not vaping products leading to the poisonings. It's black market vaping products leading to the poisonings. If a bad batch of heroin came out, you wouldn't report that there was a needle problem in America. And with that being said, though, uh, how does the local shop uh, story fit in with this overall picture? What do you sell, basically? I sell adult nicotine vapor to former smokers, yeah. ranging... And yeah, you can show, show us right there. Man. These are the types of devices that we sell in our stores. And these are the devices that are manufactured by tobacco companies that are sold in gas stations and third party online. These are the devices that children are vaping. These are not the devices that I sell, sorry. All right, and, and basically this all started when you refer to the Juul products when? In 2016, you told me? Well, vapor has been global since 12 years back now. It's been in Evansville since September 3rd, 2011, when I helped to open the first retail vapor store in the region. The youth surge in vaping began in 2016. Multiple vapors have been available again for 12 years. What changed in 2016? These small, compact, easily concealed, incredibly high nicotine devices sold in all ages retail stores like gas stations. And black market products. Uh, well, the two those, different issues could those, Yes, but could those theoretically, they wouldn't end up in your shop? No. Okay. Tell me what the nicotine levels are in the products that you sell, the nicotine itself. The vast majority of products that we sell have three milligrams per milliliter. Or at least that's the goal of where we try to get most every customer, those that we can't get all and the way why, to why zero. Is that, why is that? Why is yeah, it? I mean, what's the magic number there with three milligrams? Is that a safe level or is that going to... It's a minuscule level. It's a tiny level. It's just enough to tickle your throat when you hit the vaporizer to remind you of the sensations that you used to get from smoking a cigarette. Is this kind of a, a new version of um, cessation products, uh, at least from your point of view, uh, to get people to off tobacco, but they're still on nicotine? That's, that's where I'm having... I'm trying to process that information. Nicotine is the addiction. Tobacco, combusting tobacco, is the death, is the cancer, the COPD, the emphysema. But nicotine can cause cardiovascular diseases. Uh, some, some health statistics say that it can uh, cause digestive problems, reproductive issues. That is true. And, and according to the Royal College of Physicians, the same world-renowned body that told Americans years before anyone in the U.S. would listen or would force American tobacco companies to acknowledge what was in their products, this same body is now telling us, has been telling us since 2016, that e-cigarettes are at least 95% less harmful than combustible tobacco. I and every other adult vapor in the United States believe it is our right to make that choice to take that 5% risk. And there is the argument, though, that uh, by some people, uh, that that can lead to possibly tobacco use by younger people if they start with just pure nicotine. Whether That's it be a not small... what the data shows. What does it show? To, what you... does the data show in terms of youth? Yes. Oh. Is it the University of Massachusetts, I believe, put out the study of 8,200 individuals showing that, in fact, the vast majority that move over to nicotine vapor do not continue with a dual purpose and do not fall back to tobacco. But I'll tell you, what will lead a bunch of adult, adult vapor nicotine users back to tobacco will be an absolute prohibition against our products. And, and you're saying by next year, 
Vaping shops could be vaporized. Well, they will be vaporized. As it stands, the FDA's pre-market tobacco analysis, which was part of the master settlement agreement mm -hmm. from 20 years ago, which coincidentally was never applied to combustible tobacco, is being applied to us. What steps we have to go through to get our products approved have still never been completely laid out by the FDA, which is why the FDA had moved the deadline back to May of 2022 to give themselves time to tell us what we need to do to get approved. A lawsuit filed by the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids and financed by Michael Bloomberg forced us to move that date up to 2020. President Trump has threatened to move it up sooner. Various state governors have enacted emergency legislation. This process, by lowball estimates, will cost roughly half a million dollars per flavor to get approval to stay on the market. Before we close, uh, what, what will you tell that uh, uh, young man or young woman who are on the verge of becoming at legal age 18 in the state of Indiana? What would you say to them, uh, if you can, in a brief form, advice you would give them as far as this is your choice you taking any chances no, don't smoke don't vape you don't need it I vape because I smoked for 21 years mm -hmm. but before we run out of time something I didn't we didn't get to that needs to be said for instance in 2019 so far in Indiana there have been 173 violations recorded of selling to minors three of those were in adult vapor stores in the city of Evansville dating back to 2011 when FDA records mm -hmm. were first began there have been, I forget the total count, 50, 60 some odd violations. Not a single one in the city of Evansville has been an adult vapor store. Children are being sold to, children are being marketed to. They're being sold Jewel, Blue, Views, Mark 10 and Logic, all big tobacco company products. They are not being sold my products. They are not being sold Cool Breezes, Vapor Banks, Crush Vapors, TNT's products. Mm -hmm. And the t campaign for tobacco free kids, I keep writing to them. Maybe they'll see this and listen. We should be partners. We have the same goal. You folks that want to protect the youth, we're after the same thing. I want to destroy Philip Morris, too. I keep getting blamed for illegal criminal black market products. Mm -hmm. I keep getting blamed for the marketing strategies of tobacco companies going for your children. That's not me. My father raised me right. Well, Brad Bodart, thank you very much for your perspective tonight. I'm sure we'll be talking again as this story continues. I'd to appreciate develop. another opportunity. All right.